How do you feel about the prospects of this country as it's heading out the door, if it's still heading out the door, taking part in the European parliamentary elections? Remember, this is, a, this is the absolute minimum requirement for the European Union 27 leaders to grant us the extension that the Prime Minister has asked for. Although I should say it's slightly odd that she asked for the same extension that she asked for last month and didn't get. I think perhaps on the assumption that she will have to get a longer uh, extension that will be offered by the European Union, but she doesn't want to be seen to be asking for it. Anyway, this is all terribly annoying and uh, we're deep in the weeds here on extensions. But the, the likelihood now is that we will take part in these European parliamentary elections. And one of the people taking part presumably, is UKIP leader Gerald Batten. He's now in the studio with us. Good morning. Hello, Matt. Good morning. Have you uh, drawn up your list of candidates? Oh, we've been preparing for this for months because we've reluctantly had to concede that the whole process is being betrayed and the likely outcome was we weren't going to leave and we take part in the European elections. We would much prefer that we left and we weren't taking part in the European elections, but uh, it was my responsibility to prepare for it. We've selected our candidates. All that what we have to do now in the next few days is place them in the list so we know who's number one, who's two, three, and four, etc. Mm. That's a process we'll do in the next couple of days. Um, and we're ready to fight. Is Tommy Robinson on that list? No, absolutely not. He's not a member of the party. He can't join the party um, unless the rules were uh, ad, um, ad, no. not changed, but interpreted to allow him to do that. That isn't on my agenda. My agenda now is to fight these elections and to get the best possible result. So you are ruling out here on the record that he will ever run it's, it's as an MEP for your party? It's never been possible. And, and he wouldn't be considered anyway, with all due respect to him and everybody else. The only people that have been selected are ones that have either had a proven track record of loyalty to the party, have fought previous elections for the party, or in one or two cases which are going to give us a bit of fun in that election are people who can give us um, a lot more exposure in the social media. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, is he still your advisor, Tommy Robinson? Uh, in a, yes, in a kind of nominal way. He's had so much on his plate with his personal issues over the last few months that he hasn't actually been like, able to like do Like his jail very sentence, much. for instance. Uh, like an unjust jail sentence, which has been appealed and is now being unjustly mm. prosecuted again, like having his life threatened and all kinds of things like that, which maybe you should get him on the show and get him to tell you about it. I'm sure you, I'm sure that the, uh, you know, your audience would go up a bit if you did, but he's the best person to tell you about that. But you have got a convicted felon as an advisor. Uh, there are convicted felons in the House of Lords. We have a convicted felon who's been voting on this process in the House of Commons. Tommy Robinson is not a career criminal. He's never made a living out of innocent people as victims. And I'm not too bothered about what I think are some either minor convictions or f when he was fitted up, quite frankly, when you have a completely corrupt political system where convicted felons making laws over us. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, Mike. Matt. Nigel Farage, um, the founder of UKIP, has has left the party and he's left it because he thinks that you're too obsessed with Tommy Robinson. Uh, I've not been obsessed at all. The only time I talk about it is when people like you ask me about it, Matt. I've got much more uh, pressing things on my agenda. Nigel walked away from UKIP back in 2016, didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, I think he just used this as an excuse to go. If he'd have actually decided to hang around, um, if he'd have actually fought the leadership election back in 2000 and, um, early 2018 when I took on the leadership because nobody else would do it, um, he could have actually been leader now and could have been leading UKIP into these elections. Mm. He didn't want to do that. What he wanted is to, if the European elections came, he wanted to have a party where he's the leader, doesn't have a national executive committee, doesn't have members, it has subscribers. He got fed up with the democratic process of UKIP uh, because we are a democratic party, and that's why he's waltzed off and is now doing his thing with the Brexit party, which isn't really a liberal party anyway. They've got a name, they haven't got any members. Uh, yesterday I saw an email where one week away from when we have to, de when the European elections may be formally declared, mm. he's inviting people to become candidates right. at £100 a time for assessment. Okay. So what kind of party is that? Just to get back to Tommy Robinson briefly, um, he's still your advisor, as you've just told us. What what do you take his advice on? And what kind of advice does well, he give he you? Well, he hasn't actually been able to do a great deal for me because he's been preoccupied with other matters. Mm. But he is a man who goes up and down the country interviewing victims of these grooming gangs, which I haven't got the time to do uh, and he is, wants to put together a body of evidence on that and what he's going to concentrate on when he gets a, when able to spend his time doing that properly is not that it happened or who did it but who covered it up the local authorities the police and um, elements of the Labour Party in different regions where this has gone on and that's what he wants to uncover and that's why the establishment wants to destroy him 
But I mean, you're UKIP, right? That's the independent, you, you know, UK Independence Party. You're all about the European Union. What are you doing? You know, fan, fanning hatred against Islam. Uh, that, that, well, what's that got to do with Will you explain politics? to me how I fan hatred against Islam? Matt, okay, tell me what I'm how well, I fan hatred. Well, you call Islam a death cult. Yeah, I talk about the ideology of the belief system, which other people do as well. There's an excellent book on this by a chap called Peter McLaughlin that analyzes the whole thing. I'm concerned about the ideology. I have nothing against individuals or groups of individuals. Um, I have, uh, you know, I have friends who are Muslims, I, I, I mix with people like that. Does that like make that Christianity a death cult? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a uh, tooth? No, because I mean, it's completely different. Now, do you want? Did you ask me on to talk about the European elections and politics, or do you want to talk about actually, theology? Uh, let's talk about your, let's talk about European elections. So you stood up in the European Parliament. and You said to to uh, to Michel Barnier and Jean Claude Juncker, you have done what Philip of Spain, Napoleon, and Kaiser Wilhelm and Hitler couldn't <laughs> do. You brought Britain to its knees without firing a single shot. But you could not have done any of these things without the connivance of the traitors, the quislings and the collaborators in the British Parliament and the British establishment. Absolutely true. That's just nonsense, isn't is it? it? There's an, I tell so you what. The, the, I, reason I, why, the reason why Britain wants to leave the EU is not because we've been pushed out, because we voted to leave the EU. But we're European not leaving, Union. are we, Matt? That's why we're sitting but here talking about this fault. now. That's uh, not, uh, that's, well, they're not let, it's not as if they're not letting us it, go. It did. Let, me, let me recommend something to you. I, 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 wrote, I wrote a little book about five, four years ago uh, in which I explained if, if there was a referendum, if leave won, this is what the establishment would do. They would delay it, they would impede it with the aim of overturning it. There's been an excellent article but written last... But that's got nothing to do with Europe. Let me, let me just finish the point, please. There's an excellent article been written last week in Politico magazine by Tom McTagg, which goes into detail about this whole th how this whole thing was lost it's called how the uk lost brexit uh, and it's an excellent article that analyzes this whole thing and explains how from day mm. one the eu worked with the british establishment to make this not happen and the biggest mistake was right at the part at the beginning when they triggered article 50 when they should have set it aside and not gone down the article 50 road none of this would have been possible if we were playing by our rules and not the eu's that rules that may very well be true, and I've heard that analysis from, from quite a few people in the Tory party. Um, but to use the language, traitors, quislings and collaborators, that is precisely the kind of language that the, the police has warned against, oh, because so they, it's too inflammatory. So now the police might pay me a visit because of something I've said in the European Parliament. Well, they can if they like. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of police officers who probably actually agree with me. Let me explain the origin of the word treason. It's from the Latin traditio, which means to hand over. And what could have been more treasonous than the last 46 years of our national life when power's been handed over to a foreign power, which is the European Union? Our whole me membership of the European Union has been unlawful under our constitution because there can be no higher authority than the Queen in Parliament, and yet they have purported to hand over authority and lawmaking ability to a foreign power. The whole thing is treasonous, and it's about time we called people out for what they are but but you you know you're comparing eu leaders to adolf hitler no i said they've done something that those people hadn't done i mean that's just I mean, nonsense isn't it i mean it shows an incredibly they, thin understanding of history doesn't at all they have done things that those people weren't able to do that doesn't mean i'm comparing them to even mr Jung had a little laugh when i mm. said it you know he's got a sense of humor uh, i don't think those people are bad i think that they have an objective which is to make us subject to the eu and they've succeeded in doing it other people couldn't make a subject to the spanish empire or the french empire or the german empire but they've made it possible to do but, it to the but eu ultimately Empire. the reason why we might not be leaving the eu is because we can't agree on how we in this country our parliament our leaders cannot agree on how to leave the well exactly EU. that's why i've called them quislings and collaborators because they don't want to if it would be quite simple if you'd have done it the way i said it should be done you said that you say we're not going down the article 50 road we uh, repeal the 1972 european communities act but then you say to the eu well don't worry because it won't be chaos because all of your law has been transposed into our law as acts of parliament we're going to offer you as a kickoff we're going to offer you to continue tariff-free trade or wto your choice you can have equal rights for citizens no problem we'll give you that then we'll start to dismantle amend and repeal all the uh, 19,000 directives, 170 or thousand individual bits of mm. legislation, and we'll do that according to but our priorities. But language is important. So, I mean, you know, there are many people who agree with you that the sequence of of you know of withdrawal discussions was wrong. Mm. That Article 50 should not have been triggered at the beginning. But to 
use words like traitors, quislings and collaborators is just frankly unacceptable. Why is it? This is not, because it's well, not it's the so language of democracy. We live in a free it country. It doesn't make now. you a democrat. It makes you well, an extremist. No, it doesn't make me an extremist. First of all, I think it actually makes me truthful. And there's an awful lot of people listening to this programme that's going to agree that it's truthful. They can disagree if they want to as well, because that's what it means to live in a free country. And what I'm concerned in now increasingly is there are only things which are allowed to be said and other things which are not allowed to be said, which are not subject to the criminal law, by the way. OK. I'm talking about judgment here. You said recently we need now to behead the political class politically at the ballot box. Exactly. Right. But to behead the political class, this is after one MP was shot mm. and knife dead and another one, as we just discovered last week, received an extreme right wing death threat. I mean, this is just irresponsible the language, isn't it? The, I, and you, you, know, you did note there, thank you for saying that, that I said politically at the ballot box. But you could have also chosen not to use the word behead. Well, I could have chosen to use a thousand other words, but they're the ones I did choose to, because I was making a speech in Whitehall where in 1649, Charles I, who put himself in opposition to mm -hmm. Parliament, actually did lose his head. And now We've Parliament, moved on now, a bit since then, haven't now, we? Now, Parliament has put itself in opposition to the people, and they need to go politically. And I was making uh, an, uh, a a comparison, but a purely political one. OK, Suzanne Evans, a uh, former deputy chairman of uh, the party that you now lead, who ran for leader in 2016, recently said that she's been increasingly alarmed in recent months by the perverse direction of the party under its current leader, you. Well, that perverse direction includes taking it off the floor financially. We're about to go insolvent. Membership was crashing through the floor. We were losing 1,000 people a month. We're now, well, we went down to 17,000. I've now put us on a firm track financially. Mm. We're now having money to pay for our uh, operational costs. We've raised lots of money to fight elections. I've, I've in, uh, employed staff. And membership is now up to well over 28,000. So if that's perverse, I can take a bit more okay. of that. All right, we'll pick those things up later on. Uh, Joe Batten in the studio is going to stick around, I hope, for a bit. We're going to a break now. Uh, just to remind you that I'm Matt Fry and this is LBC. The time is 11.15. This is LBC. Matt Fry on LBC. Okay. All right, we still have Joe Batten, the leader of UKIP, here in the studio. Um, let me ask you this question. I mean, there must be, you know, well, we speak to them all the time, Tories in despair at what's happening at, at, you know, at the government level, at the leadership level. Why aren't they calling you up and saying we want to be uh, members of UKIP or uh, we want to join forces I, with you? I, you know, I, I, in fact, funnily enough, I was out for a, a dinner with a number of uh, Tory uh, members. It wasn't a Tory group, but it was a lot of Tory members there in Strasbourg a couple of weeks ago. It was a social thing in the evening. And they were absolutely despair. And I said, well, why don't you come and join us? Oh, well, you know, we're not, we've got to let them, give them another chance yet. I mean, this is the trouble. It's the tribalism in politics and people But identify. is the trouble also your language? They uh, just think you're too inflammatory well, and too extreme. Uh, and there's a lot they of, don't want to be in a club with you. Look, mate, there's a lot of people out there that come up to me and there's a lot of people are joining at UKIP because they like somebody who speaks in plain language and says what they think. And that's what I do. Um, personally... Uh, what I think the way to break this logjam in the tribalism in politics is to have a reform voting system. One of our primary policies now is to have a proportional representation system so that people get what they vote for. So many people in elections, and I've been doing this for 26 years, uh, will, vote, will agree with you totally and say, I must vote Tory because we, we can't have Labour, or I must vote Labour because we can't have Tory. If people got what they actually voted for, mm. we could completely transform the House of Commons, and then we would get people elected in proportion that people voted for them and we could get away from these safe seats and this tribalism right when the uh, government ministers say as they've said again this morning that if it you know if we delay brexit for too long if we get another referendum we are going to tease out the right wing and left wing extreme elements in british politics right they're talking about you, aren't they? Uh, well, I'm not a right-wing extreme. I'm not a left-wing extreme. You've got the left-wing extremists in Commons now. You've got a Marxist anti-Semitic Labour Party. Mm. Um, and you can, uh, and you're, and how, you're an anti-Islamic, anti no, you know, anti-death cult Islamic right-wing extremist. I'm not right-wing. With, with a right-wing well, thug as your advisor. Let me, first of all, um, I'm not right-wing. I have policies, for example, uh, purely a personal view. It isn't a party policy. I'd be quite happy to re-nationalise all the utilities. I mm. think it was a massive con. I agree you're with Jeremy. You're a national socialist. No, I'm not a socialist. I think that, I think there are some things which are so big that they they, they, they are monopolies by their very nature. And, and then with that, I would agree with Jeremy Corbyn on one of the very few. Actually, we agreed on the EU for about 40 mm. years, and he decided to change his policy. But if you're going to call me right-wing, Matt, 
tell me what right wing is, please. You, I you don't call the extreme it. right wing. Why would you? What? How, define because you're, what because that you're means. Islamophobic. You, you stir up hatred, you know, against uh, minorities no, in I this country. You know, and and you and you liken EU leaders to Adolf Matt, Hitler. I mean, Matt, that is just unacceptable. Matt, I talk nonsense, about an ideology. I don't like totalitarian ideologies. I don't want to live under one, whether it be a left wing, right wing, or Islamic. Well, you're not living under one. You're living in a exactly. democracy. Exactly, and I want to keep it that way, which is why I'm defending it. And I do not want to live, or I don't want my descendants to live under an Islamic a totalitarian system, which they're not about to. Well, either. they would if they lived in an Islamic country like Saudi Arabia yeah, or Britain. Bahrain, where they brought but back we're not Sharia. In Saudi Arabia. And we're let's in Britain. exactly now we are, but let's keep it that way. Let's defend it and keep it that way. Is there any suggestion that it might not be that way? In the future, yes. Come on. Well, you don't really believe that, do you? In the future, yes. What, you think they'll be Sharia law in Britain? Yes. The the, the fundamentalists and the uh, uh, literalist interpreters, who are the people that I have a problem with, um, these are saying that that's what they want in Britain in the long term. Well, I mean, the Scientologists want us all to live on a distant planet in the long term. It's not going to happen. There aren't more and more Scientologists. You, You say that. I mean, come on, you've got it. The trouble is, this is the problem with, with people like you, is that you, you take people like tiny me. people like you, extremists. I'm extremist. Inflam- you are an inflammatory you know, Matt, extremist. We live in, we live in a, a tiny, surreal world. You take, you take something that's, you know, lit, a, a niche opinion. It's not a niche opinion. A niche opinion, and you say this is going to be what's running our country. A, a that majority, is just listen, nonsense. If somebody, if they are a, a literalist or fundamentalist or, or indeed a, a, a good Muslim, should want to live under Sharia law because that's what it says. But, it's, but we're talking about a, minor, a tiny minority within a minority. Well, how do you know I mean, they're a tiny have, minority? Do you have so little faith how many, in how the you British know democratic minority? system, in the values of the society, that you'll think we're about to turn into Saudi Arabia? Seriously, I, I this is a serious I didn't say we're about to. Uh, my, uh, jo- you know, you know, uh, the job, the primary job of a politician is to prevent preventable evils. And that doesn't mean tomorrow. It means 10 years and 20 years and 30 mm. years in the future. And if we had more politicians who could think long term, we'd be better off. And that's what I'm concerned about. What's the long term future of this country? Matt, I could retire next week because I'm 65 last week. I could go and forget about it. So, God, why am I mm. bothering with all this? I do it because I have children and I have relatives and I don't want them living in a country uh, that I can see will not be as good as the country that I grew up in and that's what I'm trying to defend and it's a funny old world isn't it now where you're accused of being a right wing extremist when you want to defend your own constitution your own laws your own tradition your own democratic parliamentary government but the constitution you know the traditions the values of this country are not under threat from Islamic extremism they are just not they're not. I mean, at the moment, they're you not see, functioning very well because of because of indecision see, about Brexit. But they are not see, under threat from Islamic you see, Matt, extremism. You, you said, you are, this is dog whistle you politics. See, you said, Matt, see, you've you term people like me, so I'll use the term people like you who, who live in this kind of liberal elite. No, I'm not. Uh, you uh, don't know anything about my politics. Well, you don't know anything about mine, really. Well, you, you just call me a right wing extremist. You're a politician. You're the leader of a party. You just call me a right wing extremist. Just read out all but you see, you you are you belong to that group of people who just want to live in this cloud cuckoo land where it's not a problem. It's not going to be a problem in the future. So people like me must be wrong because they talk about it there's a difference between talking about it and raising it as you know a fundamental threat you know of this country let's talk about the elections again the european parliamentary elections so ukip was elected with 24 meps Mm. last time round, which you know massive chunk and now you've got how many seven so what happened to the others quite a few of them left before i took over uh, some of them have left, I think, be, well, some of them have said they don't like the, what I'm doing. Uh, OK, so why didn't they stay? Um, one thing I would say about all of these people, mm. they signed a pledge when they became MEPs for UKIP that said if they left the party for whatever reason, they would hand the seat back to UKIP to the next person on the UKIP list. When, uh, I can't remember who it was now, somebody left, Nigel Farage castigated them for not doing that. Mm. And then he went and left and did exactly the same thing. If he didn't like what I was doing, they sh- what's, if they didn't like what I was doing, they should have stayed in the party said you know we know Gerard a long time which they have we all got on fine we don't agree with what he's doing we are going to oppose him when the leadership comes up for election in 12 months time because I only took it on for a 12 months to, to save the party we're going to run someone against him Nigel could have run against me why didn't they do that right but but the fact is that you lost all these MEPs how will you know you've got all these different parties now c- presumably competing for the same bit of political real estate in these eu elections if we actually take part of them how can you you know solve that mm. problem i mean how can you get them all well, under one umbrella we we uh, uh, interesting as well in the in the second term in which i served from 2009 to 14 nigel farage managed to lose 45 percent of the meps and at one point i was joking that it might just be me and him left there mm. together in the parliament as ukip um 
How are we going to get them together? Do you together? see his all... party's a threat, by the way? Do you uh, see Nigel Farage's well, new party's a threat? First of all, it, 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 it's it's just him and a name. They, they don't have any... But he's mem- got a lot of charisma, doesn't he? I mean, he's a good, he's yes, a good he does. campaigner. Oh, I've always given him full credit for that. He's a brilliant performer. But his party is just him. It's a name. They're not going to have a proper structure. They don't have members. They have subscribers. They don't have a national executive governing body because he doesn't want that. And... Even yesterday, they were putting out an email to their subscribers, inviting people to be candidates and charging them £100 a time Mm. to be assessed. It's going to be declared next week, and a week before, they're still selecting the candidates. We've been doing it for months. Are you too busy hating each other to actually come up with a unified (laughs) message? I've got a unified message, the same one I've had for 26 years. But but all the other lot who are competing for your your votes. Unconditional, unilateral withdrawal, no surrender, no compromise. It's a simple message which leavers can understand and Mm. vote for. No hedging about, uh, no qualifying, no ifs and buts. If uh, we take part in these elections, you're back in the European Parliament. Will you carry on giving the kind of speeches that you've given before? Which, which, have, which have got you ticking off, and I think even a fine from the European no, no, Parliament. No, 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 no. They, 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 the, the, uh, the person who complained about what I said, said wanted me reported to the president, mm. so we'll see what they do. Quite frankly, I don't care what they do, because if they suspend me for a while, it'll just see my vote go up even more in the European election, so I'll be quite happy for them to do that. They did it to Nigel, mm. uh, if you may remember, when he called Rumpoy uh, a wet dishcloth, uh, and mm. Nigel said it was the best thing they ever did for him. And... Um, Will you be obstructive in the European Parliament? We never vote for EU legislation. We have a clear policy, which all our candidates sign up to, which is we don't recognise their legitimate, democratic, legitimate right to legislate over us. We oppose all legislation. We vote only vote for amendments within legislation where that returns power to the nation state, and that doesn't happen very often. So why are you even campaigning to sit in a parliament um, whose existence you fundamentally don't believe in? Uh, because it has... It, this, is the, the, we, this is one of the strange uh, tricks of history in that we can win in European elections because it's proportional representation. So we do in order to represent the British people who want to leave mm. and we promote that message. And I can't wait for the day when we have proportional representation in the House of Commons. We have a reformed House of Lords where we have a PR elected second amending chamber mm. and then we'll see how people like my party get on and how other parties get on and accept the democratic outcome, rather than the stitched-up, managed, corrupt system we've got now. And this, the language that you've been using, again, I get back to these words like, you know, death cult when it comes to Islam, you know, comparing EU leaders to Adolf Hitler, all that stuff, which clearly plays very well with, you know, with some of the audience. Is that, can we expect more of that, or are you going to turn that down? I will always say what I believe at the time. And in fact, I've never had to retract anything. I, I, you don't like what I've said, but I can defend it. Uh, so I've not actually had to apologise for anything. But it makes you a pariah anything. in British politics, well, doesn't it? Does it? Well, I'm not bothered about well, what... I'm own, not bothered about your what... Your former, former deputy well, leader of your party said, you know, it's was, an anti-Islamic look, perverse direction. So, so Nigel Farage... Um, not exactly, you know, a moderate in the political landscape of this country has called you unacceptable. I mean, you what, know. what matters in the final analysis is how many people votes for you. Mm. Politics is about votes. And if people vote for me, I'm happy. If they don't, fair enough. I don't have to do this. Uh, I'm doing this out of sense of duty and responsibility.